Hi everybody, it's Matthew here. Today we're going to be doing a fantastic, really sparkly, easy, super super easy beginner's project today. Essentially I'm using three different sizes of crystal beads and with those I'm going to net them into a gorgeous necklace. The nice thing about this design is it's just one simple little technique that we're going to repeat, 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 repeat until you're all the way around your necklace and then you just got to add a clasp. So as I said it is a very very simple design it looks really effective if you want to go and get one of these and make it yourself we do have a kit which you can go and get there's a link down in the description uh, that you can just click on and it will take you to the page where you can see all eight different colors but I will show you those at the end of the stream once we've finished all of the tutorial and stuff I'll show you on the website what the eight different colors look like and how you can get yourself a nice 15% discount uh, for a limited time uh, so yeah as I said it's a really really easy design I will show you just quickly what it actually looks like so if I just get my camera in the right spot, here we go. So here we are. This is the design just here. As you can see, it's using three different colors of gorgeous crystals. We've got a size six crystal bicone at the bottom. We have some four mil rounds in there as well. And we're also using three mil round crystals. Uh, this one here is called Rainbow Mist, as you can tell. It's all gorgeous rainbow colors in there. The uh, crystal there, it's just absolutely full of all different colors as they move around. It's super duper sparkly as well. You can see as it moves, it catches the light and looks fantastic. And then I'm also using, in the gaps, you can see there's Preciosa size 10 seed beads. You can also use any other Japanese size 11 seed bead as well. So if you've got my Yukis and Tohos, they will also work. But our kit comes with those Preciosa seed beads. Now I just realized my face isn't up in the corner. So let's just see if I can pop myself up there. Uh, where am I? Here we go. Ta-da, here I am. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be making that gorgeous little design. It is really, really simple to make. As I said, I do have the three different sizes of crystal, which I'm going to demonstrate with the electric blue colorway, which is a really vibrant metallic color. Uh, but you can see we've used some very, very high quality crystals so that you get these fantastic, uh, a fantastic sparkling look from your design. Like for example, the um, purp the sapphire purple is with this gorgeous color just here. You can see how much they sparkle, but then they also have on top of that, this fantastic blue sapphire coating, which I think absolutely makes them look fantastic. So with this design, it's very important that you use a good quality crystal that is going to shine and look fantastic. If they're a little bit dusty, they're gonna be a little bit dusty in your finished design. So you wanna make sure you've got lovely, clear, vibrant, ultra sparkly crystals to make your little piece just here. Um, now, as you've noticed, all of the different ones that I've made, I've made them from just a single color. I think that this looks quite nice. It makes it seem a little bit more elegant, maybe, per potentially. You can, of course, if you wanted to, use multiple different colors, but for just to keep it nice and simple and basic for today, I am going to be just using the one color per design. So, uh, as I said, we do have eight colors. The sizes that I'm going to be using, there's the three mil crystal rounds, which are going to be here. The four mil round crystals, which I've still got them in the bag. I should take them out. Four mil round crystals look like this here. And then we have our six mil bicones as well. So there you go. You can see all three different sizes, all ultra sparkly to really give us a fantastic look. And then I've gone for this very, very vibrant silver lined seed bead, just because I think it adds to it and gives it even more of a pop. 
Um, let's see, who have we got joining us? Just before I begin, uh, let's say, let's do some little shout outs, shall we? Uh, so we've got Melanie who is here. She says, hey all, early today. Uh, thanks for joining us, Melanie. Lovely to see you. Dawn said, I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, I'm glad I'm glad you're excited for this one. Wezzy's here. She says, hello everyone over on YouTube. We've got Carol who says, hi all, who's on Facebook? Seeing as we are live both on YouTube and Facebook. And of course, if you are watching live right now and you are brand new, don't forget, of course, that you can always like, share, subscribe. Ooh, let's hide that. There we go. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, of course, uh, so that we can spread a bit of beating love. Um, we also have Ruti, who's here from Jerusalem. Veronica's here. Jackie, Jane, uh, Angelica says, Happy Friday, everyone, uh, uh, from Wisconsin. And Saturday, for those of you who are, it's very early in Australia, of course. Uh, Becky's here. My uh, James is here. We have a, 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 a gentleman joiner uh, named James. Thanks for watching, James. Uh, I hope you're enjoying it as well. Um, we have Kellyanne. We have Chris. Uh, Colleen is here. We have Care, Angelica, Tina, Leslie, Irina, Chris. Loads and loads and loads of people. Um, especially if you are brand new, pop on and say hello. Uh, ah, and this one here, Kellyanne, uh, she says, Hello from Lewiston, Maine, USA. Happy birthday to me. Just came on to say I'm heading for the beach on this gorgeous birthday. Have a great beating day. Well, happy birthday, Kellyanne, and thanks for popping by just to say hello. Uh, always appreciated. So anyway, let's begin. I'll just go through the size of the beads in case you missed them. Uh, Angelica here says, What size did you say the, be the seed beads were? So I have... In terms of the crystals, 3 mil crystals, 4 mil crystals, which these are both faceted round crystal beads. So hopefully that will come into focus. There you go. You can see nice round crystals. So you can use the other round beads, but it's not going to be nearly as sparkly as a crystal. Um, then I have 6 mil bicones as well. And then lastly, I'm using size 10 Preciosa seed beads, the Czech-made size 10 seed beads. But you can also use your Japanese brand size 11, the size 10 Czech sizing system, and the size 11 Japanese sizing system are pretty much the same. So you can use them one-to-one, -one, or if you wanted to, uh, especially if you want to get them from our website, you could also use some micro crystals, some size 11 Aurora micro crystals, which I'll try and remember to tell you about those at the end of the stream. So um, remind me, someone at the end, remind me, show me the micro crystals so that I can actually show you guys. Uh, we have another person with a birthday. Uh, Tina says it's my birthday today as well, and I'm doing absolutely nothing for it. Well, you're watching you're watching my stream, Tina. Of course. What more could you want to do? This is this is the best thing going on on Friday, uh, Friday, June 24th. But yeah, funnily enough, it's Jermaine's birthday yesterday as well. So uh, Jermaine uh, is off this weekend, having a lovely holiday. We're all going to go into Wales uh, for a bit of a holiday uh, over the course of this weekend. Um, all together as a family, so that'll be nice. But anyway, let's get on with our tutorial, shall we? Oh, just very, very quickly, uh, if you missed my tutorial last week, where I showed you how to make this gorgeous Venetian bracelet just here, uh, if you want to go and get this one, it is still on sale for the next few days. Uh, you've got until Sunday night. If you want to get that one, um, we do have it as the discount um, with that fantastic um, real gold plated clasp. So there's a rose gold one, a white gold one, and a yellow gold one. But the cool thing is, I'm going to show you this clasp later as well, because you can also use it for this design if you want to. But anyway, let's begin. First things first, I'm going to give myself a little bit of Spidalon beading thread. So if you haven't used it before, uh, Spidalon is fantastic stuff and I love using it. And that's what I'm going to be using today. So if you've never seen it before, again, it is on our website. Uh, loads of people who are watching will advocate for how much they love it too. But basically, it's my go-to thread uh, because I love the fact that it does not fray. 
Anyway, so if I just thread it onto my needle just here, I hope I've got a good needle. I didn't check that. Uh, actually, I'll use this one. So if you get any of our kits, by the way, they do include thread and uh, color matched thread and a beading needle as well. So if you have a look just inside your packet, you will also get your beading needle that is included with all of our kits. Whatever kit that you get from us, if it needs thread, it will have it. And if it needs a needle or if it needs two needles, you will have enough. We give them to you included. But anyway, I'm gonna use the little needle that's just come out of my pack just here. And let's begin. So the very, very first thing that we need to do is grab ourselves a stopper bead. Just any old bead, it doesn't matter what. But basically we're going to go through that one twice so that it locks that little bead onto place at the end of our thread. So any old bead will do. I've just got myself a teeny weeny little seed bead. You could use anything that you like and just pop that onto your thread, slide it down almost to the very, very end. If we leave ourselves a bit of a tail just here, so from the bottom down here, leaving a tail, it will maybe 20 centimeters, um, which is probably about eight inches or so. That will give us enough to add on our clasp at the end. But essentially, uh, that's all you're gonna need, about 20 inches or so for your clasp. Now, if I just pass loop back around, pass through that bead once and pull tight, it's gonna just add a little loop of thread around the bead. I'll go round it once more and lock that bead in place. And there you go, now that bead is nice and secure and I can begin working. So if you have a look, I actually have, these are the instructions that come with our kit just here, the Eternity Crystal Necklace. There you go, there's everything that you'd need. Five grams of seed beads, 200 of your three mil faceted rounds, 100 of your four mil faceted, and 50 of your bicone crystals. Uh, so yeah, now first things first, if we just have a look down here, the first thing that we're gonna do, we've added on our stopper, is pick up Two of the three mils, a four mil, a seed bead, a three mil, a seed bead, a four mil, a seed bead, a bicone, a seed bead, a four mil, a seed bead, and then another three mil. So if I just do that really, really quickly, I'll show you what they were again. So first things first, two of our three mils, one four mil, grab yourself a seed bead in there which I'll just pick that up as well. I'll slide them down for now. You can slide them down as you go, one by one. See there? Then we have another three mil, another seed bead, another four mil, then a seed bead, one bicone. Sorry, I'm just trying to pick them up real quick. And I'll slide them down, what I've got thus far. Then after our bicone, we're almost there. We're gonna pick up one seed bead, one four mil, then one seed bead, and one three mil to finish us off. Here we go, one three mil to finish off. There we are, and that's everything that we're gonna need. So if we just have a little look, this gets us started. You can see that that silver lined blue, it looked really intense in the bag, but actually becomes much softer um, when you use it, and it is, there we go, a really great color just because it matches perfectly. Uh, there's a good comment here from Colleen, I think it is, Trey Bit. She said, I bought a bit of Spidalon a while back, now it's all I want to use, and then as a bit of a joke, she said, I'm starting to sound like a promotional bot or something, lol. Well, luckily, we know you're a real person, so... Uh, but anyway, thank you for uh, for the positive feedback about our Spidalon. So anyway, now that we have added on those little beads just here, we're going to loop back around, and we're going to pass through, which I'll show you on the diagram real quick, just here, down this seed bead, and then into that 4 mil crystal just there. So these are the two beads. We're gonna go all the way through, loop back, and then back towards our stopper bead through the seed bead and that four mil crystal. So if we have a look, I will loop on back. There's that four mil crystal here. 
and the seed bead just before it. So if we go through those two beads, through the seed bead and that four mil, we'll pull all the way through and it's going to create a nice little loop of beads at the end of our work just here. So see that? That's going to be the sort of the basis for our work just here. And uh, that's going to, as I pull that tight, this bit is going to go off to our clasp once we've finished. And then this part down here is going to be the start of our little netting section. So now the thing that I'm going to do is I want to continue and I want to come back down towards this little section here. So to create the next part of my netting, I need to add the beads that are just here. So the first thing I need to pick up and pretty much from this point, there's just two steps that we're going to repeat over and over and over. And that is going to just continue to create our little design. So first things first, we need two three mil crystals. So I'll slide them down. Then one four mil, which is just here. Then we need a seed bead. Followed by a three mil. And one more seed bead. Just like that there. That's everything that we're going to need. Now, if you notice, this is actually very, very similar to what we've already got just here. So if you have a look, these two are going to be the top of this little loop section. And then if you have a look, because we want to sort of create this matching loop that's going to continue and continue and continue, if you have a look, this bead here matches this bead, this bead here matches that one in there, then we have this bead here, this one here. So where do you reckon we're going to pass into? That's absolutely right. We're going to go into that very next bead. So you'll see that both sides essentially are the exact same beads looped around to come out of that little section just there. So if we have a look, there you go. Look at that. So now we have, see, look, they're the same. They're the same. They're the same. They're the same. And they're the same. So now we want to loop around and back up towards the top again. So if you have a look, Basically, because we're just repeating the same thing over and over and over, the, what we're going to pick up is going to be mirroring this sort of point just here. So we're going to need, if you have a look, we're going to need a seed bead because it's going to come this way looking exactly the same. A seed bead, a 6 mil, a seed bead, a 4 mil, a seed bead, a 3 mil. And then we're going to go into that seed bead and the 4 mil, but on this side over here. So it's going to loop around, look exactly the same as what we have here. It's kind of going to make a seamless netting. Hence why it's called netting stitch. It's because what we're making is this lovely net, which is symmetrical all the way along, just sort of component, component, component every time. So let me just slide myself over my beads so that they're a little bit closer so that I don't have to stretch so far. So like I said, one seed bead, because that's what we have here first. Then I've got a six mil, another seed bead, then we have a 4 mil and a seed bead. And then finally, we're going to pick up one last 3 mil crystal round bead just there. So there you go. That's going to be the exact same beads. And we're going to loop back through this little 4 mil bead here, but towards the top again. So we're just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And this little process, those two steps, that's literally everything that you need to know on how to make this entire design. Now, if we have a look, it can get a little bit loose from time to time. Just get that better into position. So if you just go back, sort of try and tighten things up a little, you because we're using crystal beads, you don't want to um, completely pull everything really tight because uh, they are because they're crystal beads they can be a little bit sharp so if you pull too tight you can break your thread so you want to keep it tight 
but don't absolutely yank, yank really hard because that can cause your thread to break. So that's a bit of a problem that you have just using crystal beads in general because they are ultra sparkly and have these sharp little edges, you need to be careful. So anyway, now we're gonna just repeat exactly what we did that first step again. So part one, we're just gonna do that once more. So we'll pick up two of the three mil beads. They're gonna sit up here. Then we need one four mil, followed by a seed bead. Here we go, See a seed bead, a three mil and a seed bead. Then we're gonna go into that bead just there. That's gonna create that same loop on this side of our work just here. So if I go seed bead, three mil and seed bead, we can just loop down now into that little four mil crystal just there. That's the only bead we need to go into. Pull that tight, but not too tight that you accidentally break your thread. There we go, get that nice and firm. Hold the beads in place, this helps to keep your tension. And then I like to grab my thread here so that everything is relatively tight like this. Now I'm gonna do the next step again, so part two. And we're gonna pick up one seed bead, one six mil, one seed bead. So if you pay attention, look, one seed bead, one six mil, one seed bead. Then a four mil, a seed bead, a three mil, a seed bead. And we're gonna go into that little bead up there. So it's gonna match exactly the same every time. So once you've learnt those two little steps, it's really, really easy to just continue on and on and on as you need to go adding beads to get the whole thing done and dusted. So now, I just realized I may have missed a bead. Yes, I did. We're gonna go through that little seed bead and the four mil. See that? See, which I forgot about it there. I could undo it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, for this one, no one will ever notice. Uh, through the seed bead and the four mil. So pull that tight. See how it's come a bit loose? Just pull the previous thread just that little bit more so it's nice and firm again. Hold it with your fingers and pull tight through your beadwork like so. There we go. Now it's looking nice and firm. So let's do it again. So first we pick up two three mils. Hold your thread nice and firm up here while you're doing this. Then we're gonna pick up a four mil and a seed bead. Then uh, a three mil And one more seed bead. And we're gonna go down into this four mil just here. Pull that. See, look, if it's a little bit loose, just give it a little tug if you need to. If you're holding your tension nice and firm between each step, you won't have to do that process, but I thought I would tell you anyway, just so that you can see that it is easy to get it tight again if you need to. So don't worry too much about that. So now I'm gonna pick up my seed bead, my six mil, my seed bead, my four mil, a seed bead, a three mil, and now we're gonna loop back and go through this seed bead here and this four mil. So I'll keep it all nice and firm while I'm doing this, hold it tight through that seed bead and the following four mil. Pull it all the way through and then lock it nice and tight between your fingers and there you go. See, look at that, it is really coming together quite quickly. It's a fast project to make this one. So now we just go three mil again, another three mil, then a four mil. Pick up a seed bead. I won't need to, I'm gonna just do this one last time because as you see, it does not take long. Once you know what you're doing uh, and you've figured out what the pattern of beads that you need to pick up are, it's really, really quick. So there we go, down into that four mil. And see how I'm still holding it tight here. Get it almost tight. There we go. That doesn't give it time to get loose. See, if you want to, you can tighten it again. Hold the beadwork. Pull it through. Lock it in place so that it's not going to come loose. And then just do that second one one more time. Part two of our little step that we have to do each time. And then there we go. So I've got... A seed, me, a seed bead, a bicone, a seed bead, a four mil, a seed bead, and a three mil. And then loop around 
through that little seed bead there and the following four mil and you can see I'm still holding my thread down here to keep everything tight and firm hold the beadwork as well that also helps to keep it tight and firm pull through and grab it with those fingers again and there you can see it comes together really quickly and the reason that it gives that nice curvature of an actual finished necklace is because when you have a look at the bottom just here the six mil beads sit uh, a little bit longer a little bit wider this sort of section that we have here with six mils and a seed bead it's a longer stretch from this point of this four mil to this four mil compared to the distance up here so if you have a look, this line of beads up here, see those? That's shorter than this line. So when you do that, by having those different sizes, that the long end, one end is long and the other end is short, you can see, if I just zoom out, it gives it a natural curve. So as you continue working, 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 as you go, every single time, it ends up like this, giving you a lovely curve now you can do this with double thread if you wanted to so you're essentially using two pieces of thread if you're having trouble keeping your tension it's a very very easy way to do it but basically i don't think it's terribly important but basically as you continue going 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 it will just keep adding 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 until eventually you've got a nice curved shape happening so if I show you with, let's show you with the purple one here. As we continue, continue, continue and proceed to work, you can see it's got this lovely curved, natural curved shape that we have just here. So you see that? See, by having this be that little bit smaller, you get a lovely curved shape happening every single time now i don't know why these dark these purple beads always look really dark on the camera but they're actually super vibrant and they look really spectacular and i think if you can see it there's a really lovely blue sapphire coating that absolutely picks it up but if you have a look the seed bead we've used is a nice light one as well because that also helps to bring out the color amp it up a bit look at a bit brighter vibrant sort of makes your crystals stand out even more now there is one other step but essentially this whole process if you just keep going keep going keep going doing this whole process as long as you want once you get towards the end so if you've just done let's just say this is now my full length of piece just here so let's pretend that this is just the very, very end of my piece and I'm ready to start adding on my clasp. If we have a look, we want to finish once we've got this loop at the end. That gives us that gorgeous little finish where if you had a look at the picture, uh, see here's our clasp piece just here. It's a really gorgeous little button, which if you watched my tutorial last week where I made the uh the versailles bracelet it's pretty much exactly the same as this but instead of using a rivoli inside which i have here i've done it with a six mil crystal so it's literally exactly the same there's there's no difference whatsoever wherever i put my purple one here we go if uh this one's a nice vibrant one so it's easy to see the difference but essentially if you want to make this piece Go watch my video from last week. I'm not going to make the same thing that I did last week, uh, which is this one just here. But the only difference is that instead of encasing a rivoli, I just made a ring of beads, which you can see them on the underside just there. See, there's that ring of beads. I put my six mil crystal inside, made the same size loops, put the crystal inside the loops, but then I joined a bead inside each loop. And the nice thing is, if you look at it sideways, by doing that, if you compare it to the earring that I made last week, for example. So see how there's little gaps just here? See, there's a gap there, a gap there, a gap here, 
a gap here as well, and so forth, by filling that with one seed bead, it brings it all in upwards, just that tiny bit, and makes it a bit more three-dimensional. So that's why this is a little bit three-dimensional. I'm not going to make this again. If you want to see how to make this, uh, I think I'll put a, a, you know, a, a video up here to where you can go and find it. But essentially, it's the video, the tutorial I did last week, shows the full process of how you make something just like this. So this is a very, very similar component. But... I will show you how we make our little loop section. So the loop section is actually super easy, but it's like a, it's just a normal loop of beads, but I've reinforced it with a bit of peyote stitch. So if I grab myself now, if we just pretend here we are, this is the end of my beadwork. I'm all done, dusted, and I want to add on my clasp. So if we look back to this side, this is the, the tail side, and this is where I would attach my button end of my clasp, this little piece just here, if you want to add that on, you'd add that onto this tail thread. So remove the stopper bead and just attach your little piece to that one there. But because I want to do the loop, I'm going to do it from this side because odds are I've got much more thread on this side and it means I'm not going to have to watch, uh, I'm not going to have to like add on extra thread so that I can make the piece. So first things first, what we'll do is pick up two three mils because that's going to match this side over here now if i wanted to again if you didn't see it last week i have a fantastic clasp which is this one here which is basically a nice crystal studded loop on this end a crystal studded loop at that end as well and it has this really cool sliding piece that will slide along your work along this bit of chain sorry to extend and shrink your piece so if you get your necklace to the exact right size you can just attach from here one side to here one side to there which I'm not going to do that today because again I showed you how to do that too last week but anyway this is a fantastic little clasp you can attach one side to here so if you wanted to it will attach just like this to here you can use some extension, of course, and then when you want to put it on, when you slide this, it ends up making the whole clasp section this much longer. So this is about uh, 10 to 12 centimeters, which should be just enough to get it over your head so that you can just put it on. If you couldn't be bothered undoing and doing up a clasp, you can use this one here. So this one here is the one that is plated in white gold, which I think looks good with the, the blue version here. If, for example, you get our rose gold kit, which is this gorgeous color just here, which has these half crystal, half rose gold color beads up there. This is going to look really good with our rose gold colored. So this is plated with real rose gold, by the way. 24 karat rose gold it's plated with. Um, I should put it into the, the description. But again, you could do it on here. And then any of the others that you like, you can choose what you prefer. So again, if you wanted to do the, the bride-to-be color, the silver might work. If you like this one here, which is the um, magenta... I can't remember the name, but we called this one in the end. But this one is full of rainbow colors. Looks fantastic. Uh, and then has a really nice, vibrant pink seed bead. This could look really nice maybe with the gold one. I don't know, or the rose gold. It's up to you. Whichever color you want to do, it's up to you. There are eight color options, so there's bound to be something. But anyway... So let's just show you how we would do the normal clasp. So if we get these two beads on, I'm going to create a loop now, which is going to be these two here. So slide them down. And then a total of 29 beads more. So once we have these two, we go one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's important that you do an odd number after this. So you've got these two here and then an odd number. So I've done ten more. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We're almost there. 
21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and finally, number 29. So when we have 29 beads like this, so there we go. If we just slide those, so you know how I said we need an odd number plus these two. The reason that it's plus these two is because we're going to loop around and pass back down into those two beads to create a nice loop of beads at the end of our work. So I'll pass through those two and this down into this little section here and the following little seed bead as well. So I'll just zoom back in so you can see what I'm doing. There we are. And now as I pull that, you'll see it creates this fantastic little loop on the end of our work there. So see that? That gives us a nice little loop. If your work comes a little bit loose, just pull that up a bit, put your fingers over the top and pull through. And that should hopefully help to tighten things up a bit. So now I need to loop back around. If this, if you like just this plain simple loop, that's enough. You can, you can finish there if you want to. Obviously go back around and reinforce it. You can stop there if you want to. So, but because I like making it a bit more decorative, I'm actually going to pass around the beads of this loop here down the bottom and then back up into this loop section to reinforce it with a second round of beads. So if we go down into this bead and this one, down into the very, very bottom here, pull it all the way through, and I'll just pick it up in my hand because it's a little bit easier to work like that. Pick that up there. Go through the three beads along the bottom. Again, pull nice and tight. Go up the beads here again as well. Back up towards this loop section. See, we've gone around all of those beads. Every single last bead. We went around them all. That's going to reinforce that little end and make it a bit stronger, but it's also a really easy way to just turn around and come back towards where we've just come from. So now I'll go back up and into... First, I'll go just into the first two beads so you can see what I'm doing. See that? Through the crystals and the first two beads. We just added those. Let's add them again. So now I'll go through here, pull this tight, and that's going to bring us back to our loop section. So I'm not quite in the loop section yet, so I'll go through just the first bead only. See that? Through just this very first bead, and that's going to bring us into position to start adding our extra row of beads to create that nice loop. So if I grab myself my tea and have a nice sip, because I'm getting doing so much talking okay there we go and now once we have that refreshing lovely uh, there we go so now that I have this just here I'm gonna pick up one bead skip this one just here and pass into the next bead so we're gonna skip a bead and into just the very next bead only as we pull tight, that's going to cause this bead to sit nicely beside the one that we just skipped. So let's pull tight, pick up a bead, and we're going to repeat this process. Skip a bead and into the next one. All the way through it, pull tight, and it's going to create another one just beside. So like I said, this one, you could even use a second color of seed beads if you wanted to, but this is just to make it a little bit more decorative. So skip the first bead into the second one, and the one we just added is going to sit beside. So I'll just continue all the way around that loop till I get to the very, very end as I do this. And once you've got the hang of it, it's very, very quick. Again, if you keep it in your fingers like this, you can keep your tension nice and firm. Just get your needle inside of the next bead. Now also, uh, in case you are very, very brand new, absolutely brand new to beading, uh, these needles, it's a specific needle, it's a beading needle. I'm using a size 
10 beading needle or size 11 beading needle? I can't remember. It's a 10 or 11. That doesn't matter too much. But anyway, the what makes it a beading needle and not a sewing needle is the size of the eye. The eye of your needle needs to be nice and fine so that it will go through the whole of your beads. So if you've never done any beading before, that's what is the difference between a beading needle and a sewing needle. It's got a very thin eye so that it can go through your beads but it does mean that you can only use very very fine threads makes it much more difficult to use a thicker thread because um, you don't have the space in the eye of your needle to to get it in there but uh, it means that it will go through the whole of your beads um, anybody got any questions by the way um, let's let's see uh, if you've got any questions now is the time comment them in below um, by the way, if you haven't seen them, what's everybody's favourite colour of the kit so far? I've got most of them here. Two of them I don't. I don't have the teal emerald, which is a really rich green colour, but I'll show you it on the website in a minute. And I don't have the rose quartz, which is a lovely pink one. Um, there's... I'll put them in the screen while I'm doing this. I'm almost at the end, though. But we've got the sapphire... Wait, zoom out just a teeny bit. The Sapphire Emerald, uh, sorry, the Sapphire Purple is this one here, which I don't know why, but it looks really, really dark on the camera. camera just, cameras just don't like purple beads. It's really vibrant and lustrous and looks gorgeous. So I think this one is possibly one of my favorites. You saw the one I've been demonstrating, which is the Electric Blue. This is the rose gold one just here, which has that gorgeous rose gold plating, metallic rose gold. Um, this one is... I can't remember what we called this one. I'll check it in a minute, but it's all full of rainbow beads. It's like a magenta -y color. Uh, the bride-to-be white one is great for if you've got a wedding, for example. Uh, the one I'm working on is the electric blue. This one here, which I also absolutely love, is the rainbow mist, which has like a really nice soft silvery color about it. But then all of these gorgeous rainbow colors come through, which I really like that one as well. And then, of course, we've got the teal emerald, uh, which is a lovely greeny, bluey green, tealy color. And then the last one is the rose quartz, which is a very lovely, soft, gentle pink tone. Uh, so there we go. I'm going to just go through the very, very one. So if you look, I'm going to put a bead next to this one and pass into that very, very last bead so this is why we needed to have an odd number of beads so that we end up having matching sides so see that there's one here one here and then it goes twos all the way around and it means i can now go back down into these beads just here and back down into my work just like i've been doing all along and into that crystal as well let's go through here Whoops, nearly oh, nearly got it there. Let's just untug that because it got a bit caught. Pull it all the way through. There we go. And back down into our work. Now, if you want to, you can go back and reinforce all of this. You could also, if you wanted to, this is up to you. This last step is optional. You can do it, but make sure you do it loosely. Is See, if you have a look at this one here... I've left all the gaps between the crystals. I find that this makes it drape better. It's a little bit looser, softer, moves and flows and looks really, really good. So this one is uh, having this gap in here. You can see the thread a teeny bit, but it gives you a lot of flexibility on your actual piece. It will move and adjust and cause shape but you can also fill that gap if you want to and this is a good point to do it with the beads just there so see how those beads all hide your thread work once you've got it there you can see instead of having a gap you do have these beads in now when you do this step make sure that you have it really really loose if you pull these tight, it will cause your work to crinkle up and it's not going to sit so nicely if you pull this tight. So if you're going to do this, make sure you do it really, really loosely so that you keep 
that soft drape keep that nice flowing movement about it without it going a bit crinkly so it is very important that if you're going to do that that you keep those beads really really loose so just zoom out see there you go you can fill those gaps it will finish it off but make sure that they're very very loose otherwise you can get crinkles happening see? But, yeah. <coughs> but there we go that's pretty much everything you need to know on how to make that design like i said this little piece doing the netting it's so simple those two steps once you've got it started with that beginning step that i showed you you just repeat those two steps on and 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 even though this looks really complex really complicated it's actually so so simple because it's just those two steps over and over and over and over and over until you get to the end then once you've done that you can make that little button which like i said if you haven't seen last week's tutorial i showed you how to make a slightly more complex version of this button uh, this one is a slightly easier version but go and watch last week's tutorial if you want to know how to make this button it's part of my versailles bracelet just here where the only difference is i've filled these gaps and i've used a slightly bigger crystal but yeah there you go and it's a six mil bead right in the center of the circle so that's pretty much the only difference but otherwise this little piece just here if you want to go and check out the video on that one which we do have a kit as well if you want to get the kit it will show you how to make this lovely piece which encloses those uh little crystals inside of that loop uh, the kit makes both bracelet and the matching pair of stud earrings which look like this there you go there's there's me in the corner they'll sit nicely like that that's this little design here you can still get that one on sale so anyway let's go have a look at the bead spider website for today and see what it actually looks like so if you want to watch back today's tutorial uh, for the next few days, if you just head straight to the Bead Spider homepage, you'll be able to come to this page just here. It should look like this. Uh, if you have a look up there in the top right corner under previous shows, that spot just there, uh, just underneath here where I've highlighted it in blue, if you click the very top one, that's last week's tutorial. You can click on that. It'll take you to the page, which is now just loading. I'm just waiting for it to load. Here we go. And there it is. There's the Versailles Crystal Bracelet live tutorial. Click on that, and you'll learn how to make that button piece if you want to. Go do it straight after this stream if you want. But anyway, otherwise, if you love today's design, it is very, very good value for being absolutely full of crystal. We are doing buy any three or more for 15% off. So if you click this button down here that says view all related products or while you're watching right now, if you have a look in the description of the video that you are currently watching, you'll see that it says um, make your own. If you click that little link, it will take you to this page right here where you can see all eight colors. Um, I think we should have plenty of stock, so I don't think running out of stock should be a problem. Uh, but it's always good to get in quick, just in case. But I'm pretty sure we've got loads. There we go. Magenta Glow. That's what it was called. That gorgeous sort of pinky ready rainbow one is called Magenta Glow. So yeah, if you want to buy them individually, just one kit only, then go add to basket, $14.95, job done, that's in pounds. If you're in the US, uh, it should be automatic, but you can choose your currency up here. If you're in Europe, the Eurozone, and you want to pay in Euros, you can always, always select that too. Or if you're in some other country and you have US dollars or you have Euros, you can use those as well. Just pick whichever currency you want to use, whatever's best for you, and it will automatically convert it based on the rate of the day today. So whatever time you're viewing that, um, it will be based on the current exchange rate. So yeah, each one's just here. There's all eight colors. This one is the teal emerald down here, that gorgeous, rich, emeraldy green one as well, which I'll just show you the color a little bit bigger. There it is there. $14.95 if you want to go and grab that kit as well. But 
as you see up here, any three or more, 15% off. Now, when it comes to this, see here where it says select options. If you want to get your discount, you have to do it this way. So you say this one here, any three or more, 15% off, come down and click select options. So once you click on that there, it will take you to this page just here where you can get your discount. So if you have a look, every single one of them, instead of $14.95, they are £12.71. So 15% less. And you can see we have all eight colors just here. As long as you choose at least three, you can get more if you want to, you will get that discount. So if you loved that rainbow mist color, which, um, who was it? Tina, I think maybe said that it was their favorite color. That one just there is, you can say, do you know what? I'm gonna buy the, uh, the rainbow mist one. Or, or for example, if you're going to a wedding, and you want to buy a gift for the bride, you can say, do you know what? I'm gonna get a bride-to-be kit and the bridesmaids are all wearing a lovely teal color and there's three bridesmaids. You can go one, two, three, you'll get them. You'll have one for the bride and three matching necklaces for the bridesmaids. For example, this is just an idea. Then you would have however many kits and instead of $14.95, they're just £12.71 each, so 15% off. You can get one of every colour if you want to. If you love all of them, you can go, do you know what? I want one teal, I'll have a rose gold, I'll have a white brides-to-be, I'll have a purple sapphire, I'll have an electric blue, I'll have a magenta glow, and I'll have a rose quartz, and you will get that 15% off on every single one of them. This deal is only for the next week, so just go pick whichever ones you like, and then come on in, and if you've got at least three, which is, here we go, so if I've got three, instead of 45 pounds and 85p, it is 38 and 13p, which I think is somewhere in the region of a six pounds 72 or so, add it to basket and you get your savings. Now, uh, I just saw in the comments, thank you to who reminded me it was, yes, remember you were going to show us the micro crystals. Uh, Rebecca says it too. Um, now, if I just go back to the home page, if you scroll on down, if you're sitting there going, what the, what are micro crystals? Well, Oh, by the way, we've got our 2 mils, 3 mil, and 4 mil round crystals, which don't forget I used both 3 mil and 4 mil in this tutorial. If you mouse over, there's the 4 mils. Mouse over this one, here are the 3 mils. Mouse over this one, these are the 2 mils. Otherwise, you can view all the colors from here. They're, they're some of the ones I was using today. But if you scroll on down, here you go. Look, Aurora, size 11 micro crystals. If we look at this picture just here, which hopefully I can zoom in, maybe. Let's see if this works. You can see the size comparison. So if you want to, instead of using seed beads, so I used Preciosa size 10 seed beads, which is just those ones on the right. You can also use the Mayuki size 11s. You can use Toho size 11s as well. So you see all three sizes are the same. And then inside there are the size, the red ones, are those faceted crystal seed beads. So size 11 crystal seed beads if you want to get those you can view all the colors just here so this button that says view all size 11 micro crystals here or you can just click any of the pictures we've also got some tutorials there on the right where we've used micro crystals so you can see how they work uh, we also have it up here that you can say size 11 crystals all here we are the only ones who have these other people say they have micro crystals but ours are size 11 Ours are the only ones that I'm aware of that are actually size 11, same size as a seed bead. There are others which are called micro crystals, but they are not actually the same size. They are bigger than a seed bead. Ours are actual seed bead size. So if you scroll on down, we have about 60 some odd colors. They're all in rainbow order, which is nice. So if you want an alabaster white one to go with the white bride to be, there it is. Want a clear that goes with pretty much anything? There it is. Silver, keep coming down. Cream colors, we've got pinks, we've got reds, goes into the golds, then into more yellowy tones, then the greens. Keep on going. Look, there's another whole second page. Come over to the second page. There you go. 
Going into the blues now, the Rainbow Sea is a lovely colour as well. Pixie Dust Luster, this one would go perfectly with the Rainbow Mist colourway. They're the same as the Crystals. Again, you can perfectly colour match your Crystals if you want to because they are the same. Keep coming on down. There's the Sapphire Coated Purple. Again, that's the same as that Crystal that I had there. Keep coming on down, loads and loads of colours all the way to your Onyx, a lovely jet black right there. Lots and lots of colours, really, really worthwhile. Um, absolutely spectacular little beads and really bring your work to life and will work perfectly in this design just here. Now, that is it for me for today. Let's just pop on back over to my face. So yeah, if you enjoyed that one, uh, please uh, like, share this video, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our Facebook channel. Uh, we do have both of those for you to subscribe to. Uh, we do also have a bead group where you can continue to enjoy a bit of fun, bit of conversation afterwards. If you head over to the, the, the description, there's a link for our bead group, which you can click on that. That'll take you to the Bead Spider Facebook group. Uh, you can post things, we run competitions, we run polls, we give away free instructions, all sorts of things like that. Um, of course, I will be back again next Friday. I do tutorials every Friday. Um, same time, same place. So whatever time it was one hour ago, if you're watching live right now, that's what time I go live every Friday. So if you're in the UK, that's 3 p.m. If you are on the east coast of the US, I think it's about 10 a.m. If you're on the west coast, that's 7 a.m. Um, in Australia, I think it could be somewhere in the region of maybe midnight, maybe. Might be a little bit earlier than that, hopefully. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah. We've got lots and lots of little community, which is fantastic. Uh, we do also have plenty going on that you can go and watch millions of videos. We've got, I think, somewhere, well, maybe not millions, but you know. We have uh, in excess of 200 videos now. So go check out our video library um, or go look at our tutorials on YouTube and Facebook and so forth. But anyway, if you want to go and get this week's kit, it's on sale until next Sunday that you can get that bundle of 15% off. If you want to get our... Um, the the gorgeous the uh, Versailles bracelet and earring set as well. Uh, that is also on sale until Sunday. This coming Sunday, this one here. This is the rose gold. The jewel is the most popular thus far, which comes with lots of colours. And don't forget, it also includes that fantastic clasp in there as well, which you can use that same clasp for this necklace, which I just got as well. So anyway, that's it for me for today. I will be back next Friday. I'm off for a lovely holiday weekend in Wales. So yeah, thank you all very, very much for joining me. I hope you had lots of fun. I hope you learned something new and have lots of fun with beading. Anyway, I'll see you all next week. Thank you all very, very much again for joining me, and I'll see you all then. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.